Hola, buen día. ¿Es uh, the mic on? I think so. Buen día. Uh, me encanta de estar aquí, uh, aquí en Barcelona, Smart City World Congress. Thank you much for your invitation. Before we kick it off, I'd like to give a short introduction about myself. Uh, I'm a former startup founder who turned to the dark side about four years ago. And I joined a tech VC firm in Amsterdam, and we typically invest tickets up to 750,000 euros in early stage technology companies. The goal of this session today is to disclose insights from our panel members on what's currently happening in tech, and in particular about the increasingly important role women are playing among the ranks of entrepreneurs and throughout this, this tech scene. So how can we further promote fem female talent in tech, and how can we close that gap between access to funding sources for women entrepreneurs? I'm extremely happy to be joined by four amazing women that are leading this change, and I'd like to bring them all to the stage and hopefully can give them a big hand. Cecilia Thom, Anna Sandelin, Maria Jesus uh, Salido, and Edna Pasner. Please have a seat, ladies. Fantastic. So um, we're going to start with you, Cecilia, if you're OK with that. Totally. And we're going to dive right into uh, to the topic. Um, and, and before you do that, it's, it's, um, it might be good to, to give um, a brief introduction of yourself. So maybe you could give a 30 second introduction. 30 seconds, wow, that's a challenge. Okay, I have to go now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Cecilia Tam. I'm the founder of, I'm talking really fast. Uh, I'm the founder of Makers of Barcelona as well as Fab Cafe. So uh, Mob is the first and largest co-working uh, community here in Barcelona and Fab Cafe is a half coffee shop, half digital fabrication lab, meaning 3D printers, laser cutters, uh, together in one place so that we can bring these technologies closer to the larger public. And I'm also a founder of uh, a startup called Future Funded. We are the first and only crowdfunding platform to uh, fund and train the next generation of women in tech. So, so Sia, you don't sound Spanish, or you're, you're not from here, right? Are you? Uh, no, but I've lived here for 14 years. Ya hablo perfectamente español. What made you decide to, 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 to build your company here, so Fab Cafe and the rest? Um, well, I came here. I came here to study, and I just stayed. But I think there is something very revealing in Barcelona and in Spain is that there's a lot of talent, uh, where whether they're designers, whether they're developers. So it's a it's a yeah. very actually uh, nurturing uh, ecosystem for startups. Yeah. So you mentioned when we when we talked before that you're a designer and, and biologist by training, an entrepreneur by chance. So could you could you elaborate on that? Um, I studied uh, architecture, I studied biology, and then I came here. And one of the, one of my frustration is that coming here as a immigrant, um, I didn't speak the language, I didn't know anyone. It was very hard for me to find a job, let alone succeed. You know, as in the, in 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 the early you know uh, years living here. So uh, one of my struggles is that there there was a lack of ecosystem. Um, here in, um, in many major cities 10 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago when I first came. So uh, the reason why I started Makers of Barcelona, the co-working, was because th so that I can build my own ecosystem yeah. uh, and to help each other out, uh, basically, and to find like-minded people yeah. uh, in one S place. S so you specifically say 10 years ago it was not that developed. So what's happened in the, in the last couple of years? And what, what do you see Oof. happening here I in the specific Barcelona tech scene? Uh, Barcelona is absolutely amazing in the, in the sense that in the last 15 years we've gone through so much we have we're, we're, we're just coming out of a crisis of yeah. many years of um, of having struggling in the in the economic um, sense that you know we, we had a we had a boom and then we, we fell through um, but then what we are seeing right now is that uh, I'm not going to talk about politics we're not going to go there no. we all know what the situation is like but uh, before all this happened, Barcelona was climbing up the, uh, the, the ranking of the uh, up and coming cities for startup uh, above Amsterdam. Uh, Sorry. Okay, number, number three or four, <laughs> you know, it's, it's great. Uh, right above Amsterdam. Yeah. So it was, uh, I think the one, the first one is, must be. I'm not sure, but it's probably somewhere in the Nordics. Could be or Berlin, or, or could be. Or maybe UK, could be. So yeah. like UK, Berlin, Paris, they're up there, and Barcelona was climbing up on top. Uh, which means that we had the resources, we had interest from investors, we had uh, a lot of things had grown, yeah. and uh, and on top of it, we have the climate, we have the wine, with the people, we have you know like everything was kind of moving towards yeah. in favor of of uh, being a great city to be a startup hub. So, and and so in our particular so and and so this is like in general the development of the ecosystem here in Barcelona, Catalonia, and and if we zoom in a little bit in in terms of transparency and diversity. 
I think you mentioned in the beginning there's sort of like a new paradigm that's happening right now. Um, absolutely. We're in the last, I guess, 10 years, and I would even say 15 years, um, we are seeing an amazing shift in power, meaning that, uh, you know, thanks to internet, thanks to technologies, we now, we as not as women or anything, we, we as an individuals <coughs> have a lot more access to resources, we have more access to technologies, funding, um, so uh, there's a shift in the sense that all of a sudden we see people uh, doing what company used to be doing and companies are doing what government used to be doing. Yeah. So everyone has somehow elevated their innovation power and their strength. Yeah. And so, and this is really revealing because as women as well, we are, you know, we have the same access, similar access to these technologies and these, um, and we can talk about funding a little bit, but like we're climbing up there. Yeah. There's def definitely a growth and, and accessibility. What, what, what is it that you're trying to do to, to, to create a more diverse or transparent ecosystem? Is that I think one of the m biggest problem that I see is, uh, is actually internal in terms of the uh, mentality of women. I mean, they, uh, th there's this, uh, there's this gif that I always use in my talk, and which is, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you draw a circle around an ant, the, st the ant stays in this circle, thinking that this line on the, f on, on that you have just drawn with a pen is a limit that he cannot cross. Uh, and I think a lot of times we do that, we put that boundaries on ourselves, thinking that, oh, uh, 3D printing is not really what I want to learn, or AI is really hard, and I think or, or being an entrepreneur is really hard, and I think a lot of times we put that boundaries yeah. ourselves. So first and foremost, how can we uh, push women to think further and beyond this boundary yeah. that we have created ourselves and society have created for because, us? Because I have to say, I'm organizing, I have a foundation in emerging technology as well, and I, I did one post on LinkedIn the other day, and I got 159 speaker incoming requests that they wanted to talk about this particular to topic. Of those 182 people, there were 12 women. Uh, I'm pretty I'll sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> fantastic. Now we know, but I'm pretty sure that not, that does represent the entire system. Yeah. So what what is what is that then, and how can we basically support that and make it more open? Is it? There are two things. So first and foremost is education. So we need to give us the give give uh, the community the the, or the 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 women the the girls uh, support and understanding that these aren't real boundaries that uh, that that are limiting themselves. And yeah. the second thing is that uh, we need to build the community. We need to build the support system, and we need to. I think 50% of the women, uh, one of their largest barriers is that they don't have mentors that are leading their way, uh, what female and male. I mean, we just don't have the, the ecosystem to support women in I think that's a good point, a mentor, so more like a mentorship. And it's a vicious cycle, yeah. right? Because if you, if you don't have the next generation of uh, women entrepreneurs and women in tech, they're not gonna be mentors for the next generation. So you yeah. need to grow that, and how to grow it is through education. So, I mean, you have multiple roles, right? You're an innovation consultant, you're an entrepreneur, you're a biologist. Uh, what role do you prefer best? Um, I prefer to think of myself more like a generalist, yeah. and what I do is I, I'm, I do strategy. So I put, put bits and pieces together so that uh, whatever the situation is, that particular formula is best suited for. Yeah. So. Uh, you mentioned uh, you went to Singularity Uni University. They are, of course, all about emerging technologies, AI, VR, robotics, machine learning. Uh, are they also aware about this topic, and um, is there anything that, that they're actively doing as well, too? Oh, they're very well aware. I mean, I'm actually surprised out of the uh, 90 people that were there, uh, 47 from different countries, and more than 52% of us are women. And uh, the reason they, they're very w aware in the sense that it's all about building the right uh, combinations and diversity within the group so yeah. that uh, we can have, because the, the more diversity that you have, the more ideas, the more flow, and the more uh, different perspectives that you can bring in yeah. uh, that will generate more outcome. Right. So if you have a very isolated group and very singular, um, then you're very limited in terms yeah. of the outcome. So how, how can maybe also because we are at smart city, how can how can cities promote you know talent and access to funding in a more diverse way? This is not an easy question, I know, but is, is this a question for me? Well, more or less. Uh, I mean, no, absolutely. So I can I. Uh, I think that the government, and this is by no means a criticism, uh, I, uh, I can only speak from my experience in that in, in Spain, for example, the role of the government uh, is more, on, uh, more business driven, so, uh, or economy driven, uh, when they should be more focused on uh, 
giving access and giving resources yeah. and allowing um, access to all. I mean, not just limited access, right? And so, yeah. so the problem has always been like, well, if I help you, I also have to help you, help and then you and you and you and you. And so, how do they decide on whom to yeah. whom to help out? So um, it's it's not easy, but I think the role of the government should be able they they should be able to give. Uh, equally the, the access to those that have the capacity to innovate and to yeah. be entrepreneurs in the next round, whether male, female, or, or not, but yeah. making that consciousness that, uh, that needs to have that, that equality. So with, with your makerspace, uh, Fab Cafe, and the other initiative, what's, what's going to be the next step? What's your, your, your visionary goal in the next three to five years? Um, so what we have seen is that, um, uh, first and foremost, I, I want to make this one point uh, that I don't know if you guys know what, what, what a makerspace is. But a makerspace essentially is, an, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a co-working, but with tools, with 3D printers and uh, technologies and, and whatnot. And, uh, and I'm really, I, 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 the first thing that I've noticed inside a makerspace is that uh, you remove all the stigma of whether you are, you know, whether you are from Amsterdam or I'm from Hong Kong or, or she's from Finland. No, no, no. When you're in a makerspace, all we care about is your skills. Because that's what we talked about. So you could be yeah. 90 year old and you're a carpenter and you have that skill set. I mean, we're gonna work with you disregarding like yeah. your background. And so it's very, very um, dem, 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 what's the word? <laughs> uh, demo uh, democratized. Dem yeah, word, no. yeah, whatever. You guys <laughs> know what I'm talking about. So, uh, so, on, on the, uh, so uh, it's it's a very um, nurturing space and a very diverse space. So onto your question about the next step. What we have also understood is that our valued are the people uh, uh, and their skill sets and their talent. And what we have also noticed is that companies have uh, a need to access these talents. So we are building the bridge between these two worlds, yeah. basically, and what is called open innovation. Thanks so much, Ashidi. I'm pretty sure well, because we have a really diverse uh, audio, um, panel today, we have uh, Israeli representatives, we have someone from Finland, so I'd like to hear your opinions on, on the state of, of tech and VC there as well. Uh, for now, uh, this is Ashidi. Give her a, a big hand. So for um, the purpose of this moderation, it's actually good to, to know uh, that I traveled to 38 cities in the last six to eight months, trying to demystify the secret sauce between those different cities, what makes a city tick, and the secret behind entrepreneurship. And I hope today we're gonna find a similar secret sauce behind you know, leading women, women in tech. Um, for our next uh, uh, panel member, I, before actually I, um, I'll uh, introduce her, I would like to give her as well 30 seconds to introduce herself. So maybe Anna Sandelin, you could take the mic and give us a short introduction about who you are. Hello, my name is Anne Sandelin and I come from Jyväskylä, Finland. Jyväskylä is the uh, uh, seventh largest city in Finland, but, uh, but not really that big compared to Barcelona and other cities. My background is in architecture and urban planning, but nowadays I work as a director of uh, uh, business development and employment and also the largest urban development projects that we have. Fantastic. So I'll leave the option to you. You can either take the stand or you can sit down and give her a big a round of applause. Anna Sandelin. Thank you, Cecilia. Actually, it was a good introduction for, for my presentation as well. Here are a few slides about women and women's position in Finland. Finnish education system is equal, free, and high quality for everybody. Also, also girls and women, no matter the gender, ethnic, religious background, or the income level of the family. The girl students, uh, they shine at school in every le level in the, in, the, in the early years, also in the mathematics and natural sciences as well. And in the university from the graduates, 57% were women in 2016. And from our university, University of Uvascula, uh, the graduates are uh, two thirds of the university students are women, female. Um, being a, uh, a woman entrepreneur in Finland, the women are typically micro entrepreneurs. And in the fields of health and social services, uh, sports, well-being, beauty business, cleaning services, and one of the one of the um, increasing ones is also in the marketing, law, and digital services as well. Being a part-time entrepreneurship is typical for women, combining the family life and the work life. Um, here are some of the obstacles, uh, boundaries for the growth in Finland. 
and the women entrepreneurs say that the, uh, one of the main obstacles is the coordination, still the coordination between family and work. Also the incompetence in economics, that's, I think that's what Cecilia was telling about the, the ant and the circle, that is, that is one of the things that we set the boundaries to ourselves. Uh, Finland, especially the high labor costs and difficulty to get financing as well. And then again, the cultural and social barriers. And risk, risk taking, uh, risk avoiding and cautiousness can be seen as one of the ob obstacles. In Jyväskylä, in my city, 51% uh, of the uh, startup entrepreneurs have a background in the university. So they have the education already. And the number uh, there is unusually high for a Finnish city as well, or European city. 88% uh, of the new enterprises operate in the service sector, 8% uh, in retail, and 4 in manufacturing. And little, still, <coughs> little over 10% of the CEOs <coughs> are women in Uvascula. Here I have a, an example of a startup company called Resenart, and it's a, really an interesting, interesting company. Um, they work in a, in a European level and in global level as well already. They do uh, art research, uh, research uh, they offer unique uh, analytical services in the art world. <coughs> they do timing of the, of, of the art pieces, they um, study and, and give uh, services on, authentic on authenticity and forgeries as well. Um, the startup is university based and it has its foundation on the synergy from different departments uh, like art history, physics, chemistry, mathematical from to information technology as well. Uh, the company, the startup is run by three women. It was founded in 2014 and it was born global at the same moment. They have clientele around the world. And I think what is, what is important about ResonArt is that, that combining the traditional uh, like female sector together with the technology they have combined, uh, created something new, combining their expertise in art history and, and bringing it into the business as well. Then what can the city do to help women entrepreneurs? Uh, at this moment, already over 50% of the women graduate from high schools and universities. They have the education and they have the e expertise. What can we do? Like in it, what they did in Resonart, I think we have to encourage them to, for, to combine the human sciences, like, uh, like social knowledge in social services or elderly care, combine it together with the technology to create unusual innovations where women can, uh, can benefit from, from their uh, strong features. And the role of the city is to provide support and coaching for the startups. Uh, Uvascula Business and Innovation Factory, Factory is one of those uh, means or tools to encourage and to help for the students and researchers to get their best, best business ideas so we can offer them the best startup support and coaching and together with the networks. So the networks so that they are easy to come, to come and easy to join the networks. Uh, the Innovation Factory Limited is owned by the city and also uh, our university and the University of Applied Sciences and Ed Educational Consortium. Because there I think the strength is that, uh, that uh, instead of doing these things separately, we combine our strength and the university can there help, help and bring the right attitude and right atmosphere for the female startups. And then the city can help with the startup phase and then off to the accelerator phase as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Give her a big round of applause. Yeah. And I have a seat and, and might have one or two follow-up questions for you if you don't mind. So you can, you can take the mic and, um, and go ahead. So, I mean, you shared some interesting data about what's happening in Finland, specifically also in the, in the city where you're from. How does that, I mean, <clears throat> we heard the, uh, s some insights already about Barcelona, Catalonia. What, what do you think has made Finland that equal opportunity driven uh, country? What, what is it? I think it all starts with the education. The boys and the girls, girls in the elementary schools are, uh, they are treated as equal and seen as, as having the similar potential to develop and to learn. Yeah, so and, and how could we, how could we so like translate that or bring that mindset to, to other places? I mean, what's, 
I don't know. The difficulty with us is also that when you come to your teenage years, you kind of lose some of the idea of the equality, and then you, the women start to build their own barrier, barriers and, and obstacles at that point. So yep. uh, I think the teachers are in, in a really important role there. That they have to support and encourage the young girls yep. also, that they can be talented in mathematics and in, in technical sector as well. What, what key insight could you share with the audience today? I think, oh yeah, I want to become an entrepreneur or do the stuff that I'm meant to be doing. I, I feel some kind of barrier. How did you manage to overcome that in your personal perspective? Well, uh, well, in my in my own career, it's uh, career. It's been, um, I think, it's been through the expertise. I've been concentrating on doing things the best I can, and then opportunities then just come along and pass yeah. themselves. Thank you so much. Please give her a big hand. So be, before we go to our next uh, speaker, I'd like to say that there's also an ask and vote system. Uh, I think there should be information there. I'm not really sure where the app is, but you can actually ask and vote questions yourself. And then within the breaks and during the Q&A, uh, we can pick those questions together and ask that to our panel members. So please know this is definitely an interactive session. For our next speaker, uh, the same uh, goes to you. I would like to give her a 30 se second introduction, introduction before she speaks. The floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Maria Salido. I, am, I was born in Barcelona. Uh, currently, I am the CEO of Social Diabetes. This is a digital health company dedicated to diabetes management. We developed a mobile app and a desktop solution for doctors in order to improve the, the daily activity of, of patients. My background is IT. I was a programmer, not a really good programmer. <laughs> Uh, that's the reason why I go very, I go up very quickly in the hierarchy of organizations, uh, till a management, till, till reach a management, a management profile. But 20 years after, I get bored because big companies, innovation in big companies is not only is not always easy. I create my own company, a consultancy company. With that company, I was traveling alone all over the world. I created my that company in Chile, in South America. But when I met my business partner, Victor, who, uh, who, was, uh, who was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and what I saw, what he created, I leave everything. And I joined, the, I joined him, and, and we are now developing oh. social diabetes. That's a powerful introduction. Uh, I think I just, uh, I'm going to give the stage to you, so uh, go ahead with your presentation. Okay, I decided to study computing at 14 years of age. And what inspired me to take that important decision was my love of that picture, that film, uh, War Games. If you are <laughs> not very young, maybe you remember. At that time, I was not aware, but as you can see in the picture, the one who is working is the boy. And the girl is just looking at his work and maybe admiring it. So I've been trying the whole of my life uh, being seated on that chair. Uh, but I would like to say that the messages that society are giving to women are very different than the ones men receive. So I would like to share with you some drawbacks about the relationship between women and, and her careers and her professional lives. First, I would like to say role model, no? the expectation of societies. The image of success is this, is a man, black man, white man, sorry, uh, ambitious, uh, aggressive, um, strong. And this is very different uh, about the stereotypes of women behavior and image. So tools, technology, machines are made for men. And care environments, uh, assistance work, as you, as you said before, are designed by, to be done by, by women. So if you as a woman want 
to break the mold, you have to be willing to deal with some lack of um, empathy from society because society are expecting different behavior from you. Women have more pressure, more pressure, internal pressure and external pressure uh, than men to take care about her personal environments and, 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 and balance between her uh, professional careers and personal life. Lack of access to resources. Uh, you mentioned before, resources uh, not only means money, but especially money, but also means educational education, also means opportunities to be promoted in organizational hierarchy. So if you are an entrepreneur, and if you are a woman, you will find additional difficulties to reach uh, financials, to be, to be, to be, to be invested because the rectilinear cortex of the brain of your potential investors will easily trust more in men than in women. Uh, it's natural because men have more evidence about his business success than women. It's, it's a kind of um, statistics. And guilt. Maybe it is, this, is, this is very personal, but I think <coughs> women feel, uh, tend to feel guilt. Uh, religion, sexuality, motherhood, the sense of responsibility. And the first consequence of the most consequence of this guilty is women are breaking their backs. So they are working hard because they need to demonstrate something that men are not, uh, don't need to demonstrate. Many times I see women uh, behind the scenes Meanwhile, men are participating in conference, business trip, cocktails, social environments. In fact, is here where networks of power, power networks are being established. And at that places, women are not always uh, be because they don't have the time or don't, don't allow themselves the opportunities to be there. So what to do? I don't know what to do, but I would like to say, to share with you some, some tips, but some tips, some tips at, on an individual level, because there are a lot of publish, a lot of information about what can do corporations, cities, and, and governments, but at individual levels, what's the messages we have to tell to ourselves in order to improve the situation? If you're a woman, this is a message for women. Uh, be part of your, be part of influential network. For a while, forget your husbands, forget your ch children, forget responsibilities. Hard work is not, is, 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 is not everything. You have to be uh, connected with your network. Your professional life depends on your influence, depends on your contacts, depends on your mental health. Sit at the table, take your position, be proactive. Don't, don't care about this. You have to defend your positions. You, you have to be proactive, proactive towards your, 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 your goals. Women systematically underestimate their own abilities. Make your partner a real partner. This is a quote for, from Sheryl Sandberg. Maybe most of you know her. So you can read it. This is tremendous. So it's not the children who stop the women's career. It's the husbands. So girls, if you are married or if you are dating with a man, with a boy who don't respect who don't understand, who don't support, who don't commit with your professional career, just leave him. <laughs> Are important, take care of yourself. We don't give this, uh, very important, but you have to eat healthy, you have to make exercise, make yoga, go to pilates, read, walk, look for pressure because 
um, your professional life, your goals, your objectives depends on, on, on your ability to be okay with yourself. And men, <laughs> dear men, uh, look around, be aware, and be feminist. Be a women-friendly person, because a women-friendly world is a human-friendly world. So thank you. Thank you so much, Maria, for this uh, powerful speech you just gave. And I think you, uh, you triggered the audience as well, and, and myself now thinking about something that for me comes really natural, networking and business networking, and being here on this stage and, and, and at the speaker's drinks afterwards. So I think it's a really strong point. How do you tap into that? How do you start out? So you, you st everyone starts out with zero network, right? And then there becomes an uneven playing field. So how do you, how do you break that circle? Actually, my... I belong to a technology arena, so I was a woman uh, surrounded by men. And, but I didn't aware, I, I didn't was aware uh, about this difference. I, I think the most important, um, um, the most important uh, objective is to be comfortable with your environment. And it doesn't matter if you are a woman and you are a man. So we will reach the final goal when we won't be aware about how many women and how many men are in the, in the... So the whole of my life, when I have been surrounded by men, I, I wasn't aware if I was in a min minority or not. The point of inflection for my personal experience is when I jumped to be entrepreneur. In this, in this context, I, I, I had some difficulties. Yeah. And the way to, to, to survive or the way to, to jump these difficulties is trying to connect with other women that uh, was uh, step one step or five step uh, yeah. uh, forward than me. Is it also maybe sort of like the, the, the unnatural hustling that typically comes natural with, with men as well? Or? We need to act naturally, naturally but consciously. Yeah. It's a combination. Maybe it seems contradic contradiction. This yeah. is a contradiction, but we need to act naturally, but be conscious that there are differences yeah. and be conscious that we have handicaps. Because if you are not handicaps, uh, barriers. Yeah. Because if you are not conscious about this, you maybe uh, can tell yourself uh, messages that are not that are not. Well, so uh, you mentioned there was an affliction point for yourself when you turn entrepreneur. Was it what, what? What was the? What was the, actually the, the turning point, the tipping point? So. I think I I have found a lot of help in in women networks. But I don't really like the women environment. I think women need to be in social environment uh, with women and with men. We need women supported uh, network. And, and this is useful and this is a way, uh, starting point to, to be connected with, with, the, with yeah. the world. But my objective or my, hub, I would like to see that women don't need a specific women network. No. But this is, this is very helpful. For yeah. me, it has okay. been very helpful. Of course, there's, there's an international audience here today, but maybe if we zoom in a bit in, in Spain and particularly Barcelona and the area around, is, is there any networks or <coughs> maybe meetups that are mixed or unmixed, but that are really relevant yeah. that they could definitely there, join? Yeah. yeah, there are a lot. A lot of movements, a lot of networks. I, for example, belong to a Lenin because Sales Sandberg have a Lenin a Lenin network all over the yeah. world. I am participating. So each of us have to be committed with with this yeah. movement and trying to identify uh, even if you are a man or a woman why you can support yeah. this 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 women promoting and this women connection with the world and now if we take it just maybe just on the on, so on the positive side there's been a lot of attention towards this right this topic and maybe it's also the moment to leverage on the momentum and and take that stage but but then still you need to so like yeah. do it right so how do you how, how do you promote that yeah you have to be aware that we are Latins, so we are still have some cultural um, barriers. 
to identify the women potential and the men potential at the same level. I think in the US and in other countries I have been living, yeah. uh, maybe North uh, Europe is, is different. We are now in our, in, our, in our way, but a lot of things have done very well. Thank you so, <coughs> thank you so much and give her a big round of applause. Maria. So I'd like to remind you it's still possible to ask and vote for, uh, for to, to ask your own question to our amazing panel members. And um, it's up to our final, but certainly mo not, not the, the least, uh, a panel member, Edna, to, to take the stage. And before you take the stage, Edna, you know the format. You have 30 seconds to introduce yourself. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I started out as a teacher, high school teacher, then became an academician and then became a management consultant, and then decided that smart cities are the future and founded the Israeli Institute for Smart Cities. And um, uh, in addition to that, uh, since I'm very active in the European Union R&D program, I was invited to be the national point of contact in Israel for the ECWT which is an NGO too, uh, looking to uh, promote girls and women into the high tech. Fantastic. So with that said, I would like you to take the floor. So give her Thank a big you. hand. Edna Pasman. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about something that uh, uh, emerged out of my work with smart cities. I have been a pioneer in this area, started with the knowledge cities concept over 20 years ago, and then uh, knowledge gave place to smart, probably because of the smartphone and the smart card, etc. cetera. Uh, and I'm sad to say that uh, only recently, through talking to women, both in Europe and in Israel, I realized that the number one issue for all of us to uh, become successful in our careers is to have safe cities. And unfortunately, I don't see that safe cities are the number one issue, not in this conference, not in other conferences uh, that I attend. So I am very happy to have the opportunity to raise it as high up as I am possible. I would like to start with a personal story. I studied in the United States. I have a PhD from NYU in a very pioneering program called Media Ecology, what, which was looking at the interface between technology and society. One evening when I came home from an evening meeting, I was attacked in the parking lot and I uh, yelled as much as I could. The attacker was well-dressed, was a white male, uh, middle-aged, and he said, don't yell. And the more he said, don't yell, I yelled and hoped and uh, luckily enough, my husband heard me yell and came out to, to save me. And the attacker ran away. The police came and they told my husband that it was very stupid that he ran out to save me because the attacker could have killed both of us. But that's not the end of the story. The following day, I met one of the neighbors from the um, a neighborhood where we lived, and he asked, why did you yell last night? And I opened my eyes and I said, you heard me yell and you didn't come out to help me? So for me, this story of safety in cities, which arose last year here in Barcelona, where we did a, with ECWT, we did a knowledge cafe on the issues that face women in high tech. And they all said the number one issue in a smart city is safety for us, for the girls, for the family, etc. 
So I am very happy that I was invited to uh, raise this, is this issue uh, today. Uh, the other institute that I represent is the Israeli Smart Cities Institute. This was through identifying another need. Uh, I found out that the municipalities are lost when it comes to smart cities. Everybody asks me what's a smart city. While they are bombarded by all the vendors who push all kinds of technology for them, and then one of the CEOs of the cities in Israel with whom we have been working for over 20 years, she asked me, tell me, what do I need when it comes to education? She was very interested in smart education. Do I need a smart board? Do I need an iPad for each child? Do I need um, a, a, a mobile for, uh, for everyone? What is it that I need? And I realized that this interface between technology and society is very demanding when it comes to smart cities. And I decided to start an NGO which is focused on that, where we are a group of about 20 experts, each in another uh, area of expertise. My passion is smart education, but uh, there are others with smart uh, transformation and smart health and smart building, etc. And I believe that we need to be able, as an NGO, not for profit, to help municipalities uh, decide what type of smart city they want uh, to develop, uh, what type of strategy they need in order to get there, what type of pilots they want to do with all the uh, technology providers. And this is our mission. So this is the second organization. Uh, I talked already about the European Center for Women and Technology. Um, I'll move forward. Um, why is safe cities so important for women? This is what came out in my conversations with women who are very active in high tech. Um, we need to, uh, to help them, and I think the municipalities are the number one responsible uh, organizations to look at that. Uh, unfortunately, many of the mayors have so much stress to show that they are efficient, to show that they save money, that safety does not become number one on their agenda. And I would love to see this uh, a change, uh, maybe through some conversations like the one we have today. Um, and there are different uh, questions uh, that come up with that. Um, I think that we need to look at all of them. Uh, my presentation will be later available for everybody. And Ton said you have only eight minutes. So I need to move forward fast. Uh, the high priest of urban renewal, Jane Jacobs, I guess most of us know about her, said something which I think is worth reading out, li out loud. The healthy city sidewalk does not rely on constant police surveillance to keep it safe, but on an intricate, almost unconscious, network of voluntary controls and standards among the people themselves and enforced by the people themselves and not by a neighbor who asks me the second day, why did you yell yesterday, yes? So uh, Jacobs suggests that the healthy sidewalks transform the city's high volume of strangers from a liability to, a, to an asset. And all of our cities, my city, and many of your cities have lots of strangers in them, and we get more afraid and more afraid instead of turning this into an asset. Um, 
I believe that uh, maybe because I started as an academician, that behind every practice you need to have a very solid theory. And my work both in my business uh, of management consulting and in the NGOs that I contribute to is based very, very strongly with a lot of passion on the uh, emerging concept that for 100 years we looked at organizations at machine, as machines and we need now to look at them as living organisms inspired by the natural sciences or what we call complex adaptive systems. My time is up, so anybody who wants to hear more about my uh, uh, beliefs regarding this can talk to me later on, I am here. So my vision is that if a city is an, a living organism, and if we want it to be safe, we want to have a conversing city where people talk to each other, know each other. If the uh, city is a conversing city, it is constantly learning and it becomes smart and hopefully above all, safe city for all. Um, what is the platform to make it happen? Um, my friend Margaret Whitley, who did her PhD where I did mine in the media ecology program at NYU, she said something that leads me all the time. Whatever the problem, community is the answer. Now if we look at earthquakes and tsunamis and floods and everything, the uh, formal infrastructures all fell apart. The only thing that helped people was the community. So we need now to go back and strengthen the community. I have to share with you something personal. Uh, the Jewish people was saved through 2,000 years of exile only through strong communities. There was nothing formal there. So we know something about community development and that's my passion. I have some uh, examples here, but time is up, of what uh, can be done to raise the safety of especially women in cities. Some very simple things, and you can all look it up later on uh, the Google. And if you have more success stories, I would like to gather them. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Edna, for this uh, insightful talk. Uh, let's see if there's any questions that came in from the audience. Great, yeah, and of course, let's do that. So if you can, yeah, that would be great. So one mic here, one mic there. Uh, so Edna, you, you, you kind of went over the time a little bit, so I'm not gonna ask you a follow-up question. No worries, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have some more uh, questions and, and Q&A coming up. Uh, let's see if there's anyone from the audience who has a question. I see one, you can take the, the stand there, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I think um, maybe we can have, get some sound and audio over there. <coughs> yeah, good morning. I am Marga, work for the Generalitat of Catalonia. And um, I would like to um, put a question related with a survey that uh, was done at the university, at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. It's related with the degrees names. When I started my degree in computer engineering, the amount of women there was the 3%. Before, the name was just computer, not engineering, and was half and a half. So it seems that there is something related with the language that in the very deep is related also with the mentality, but it's nice to, to think a little bit about it. And, and, and yes, I want to point something to Maria. Of course, I have invite of uh, Nordic countries or something like that, but not because we are Latins. It's because there is a government support and a structure to try to be 
also a family life at the same time that a professional life. This is not only our behavior, that we try to do everything as we can. It's also something that comes from the government. And we are responsible of the governments that we live. Thank you so much. Maybe anyone wants to comment on? on? No, no, absolutely. absolutely agree. Uh, there are a culture um, environment who made me make us to behave in some lines, but especially there are government policies, pol public policies to promote one culture or another culture. And it's, it's interesting the, the, the reference to the language because it, I, I think that we are still to generate some uh, attractive um, packages or attractive uh, content for women because uh, uh, the names are important and the messages are important and, and, the, and the culturally, in general, who receives women are, are very important. We are not attracted women. And, and not only to say to you, could you imagine a man starting a presentation saying, because I know was not a good programming, I become a COE. We have to stop asking pardon or begging pardon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, I, we, we got some great questions for you. One second, uh, sir. I, I just want to do one question that I see here coming up right now is uh, one of the main uh, from Anna, actually, one of the main problems with encouraging women is the historical disinterest in technical sector. Uh, how can we encourage young women to be involved and learn tech? And I wanted to dive into this, particularly because of the, the question before, and also my personal experience in emerging technologies. Everything is about software hard and, and hard engineering, so it's going to be crucial more and more. So, do you have any ideas on that? Is it the language? Is it something else? Is it Not only because it's a reference. It's Women have no references, public references, cool references. So if I see films, pictures, books, my references as a woman are um, a woman who are doing very different jobs than technology, uh, engineering, and, and so on. So we have to create uh, cool and interesting references for, yeah. for women. And it starts by languages, but culturally in general. Just very quickly, if we track the education of uh, girls and then women in universities, uh, the interest of girls wanting to get into STEM education start out as equal as boys. Uh, but then they start to falter off as we move towards universities. And part of the reason is because that we don't have this referen po reference points of you know, women in this industry yeah. and how they could become role models for this. So we need an ecosystem and we need the community that Edna was talking yeah. about to, to kind of foster this mentality of, of not stopping ourselves short, not being that ant in that circle yeah. and continue pushing those, those boundaries. Exactly. Edna, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I would like to add something to that. Um, if you don't know, STEM became STEAM. You know, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And everybody is telling the girls you have to study mathematics if you want to participate in the digital age. Now, it's a male story. Because the real story is that uh, what the um, current a digital age is looking like is co going to be completely different in the future. We talked about it before. Um, we don't need to teach ourselves coding because this will be done by smart machine, machines. But we need to be very creative, very innovative. We need to study history. We need to study uh, literature. We need to be exposed to the arts. This is why they added the A. In most of the leading corporates, they now have people with liberal arts backgrounds. It's a story that the men don't tell us because they want to keep us in the, uh, in the family life. So it's time to know. By the way, my background, I studied literature for my bachelor's. And I'm a management consultant working most of the time with men. You just need to change the story. And the story is that the future will belong to the most creative, innovative people, people who are team players, people who have a lot of passion and compassion, and women are much better on the yep. average than men in this sense. Edna, thank you so much, yes. Uh, yes, you can definitely applaud, of course. 
I'm going to continue with the Edna. I think uh, what Edna said, uh, I think previously it was about more uh, purely technological things, mathematical things. But now when we're going more into the digital age, we're, we have to combine things and integrate things. So it's not all that you have to study coding to be successful. It's, it's you have to understand entities and and uh, and then like combining like you're combining uh, you know knowledge of management of course you have the coding background and combining it with, with the care of diabetes and 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 the knowledge on that i think that way we get new innovations and new ideas and it's not so gender based anymore we're, we're running out of time but i just I, there's one question coming in i just want to finish on that note and give one of you the opportunity to answer the question so what do you think women can bring to the tech industry that men cannot so what do you think that women can bring to the tech industry that men cannot? I think the human interest is one of the things. Cecilia? Um, I don't think it's a gender thing. I think it's an individual thing. I think we actually need to stop thinking men versus women. Yeah. Uh, I think it's about individuals, about our capacities, about I mean, I don't want people to label me as a woman. I want them to label me as a technologist, as a someone who with capacities. Yeah. Um, so. Fantastic. I, I, I just put up the questions because there's a lot of questions around that topic. So, and uh, apologies. I, I okay. we, we have to, to keep it short. Now, I, there was one question from the audience, and then, yeah, so it's, yes, go ahead. Thank you for a very good uh, exposing of your personal um, experiences. I have an observation and a question in, uh, for Maria. In your list, you put guilt as the last thing. I would suggest m that maybe we put insecurity because I think insecurity is very, <coughs> guilt has a very big color to it. I think it's insecurity. And judging from this, I would like also to take advantage of what uh, you said about the complex adaptive system. So ask, you are all wearing black. Is it an emergent behavior or is this something that was planned? And third, you all <coughs> seem to talk about women in tech and education, but there are many women, my mother including, that did not go to the university because her husband, her parents had instilled to her the notion that she has to raise her kids. And there are just too many of such women, not only all, but around us, and they have a very strong creative power, which is now unleashed by you know, the, the breakdown of the barriers that the internet I, and other technology. I have to stop you there because we're running out of yeah, time. Is, can is you there, please is, comment? Is there a quick, let's say, five, ten second answer to one of the questions that I the gentleman I personally asked. prefer black than pink. <laughs> That's excellent. So I think with that note, it's uh, safe to conclude that we had a, a great session. I think it's about inclusiveness instead of exclusiveness. That's something we can all take away uh, to home. It's about community development. It's about safety in communities, something we can all directly contribute today. Um, we talked about a lot of things and there's so much more to talk about and I believe all, all of you will be here for the rest of the day so if there's any questions from the pan from the audience to them please reach out uh, same goes for me um, and don't forget build your personal networks as well right and, and be here and stay for the dinner and drinks and networking later uh, thank you so much uh, Cecilia Anna Maria and Edna give them a big round of applause <laughs>